So as billionaire Mike Bloomberg floods networks with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of television advertisements, he is actually starting to see some results and he's surging. He's rising in the polls. And he had this risky strategy to skip the first early primary states. He's banking on, you know, Super Tuesday, delegate rich states like Texas and California. And, you know, who knows if that's going to be successful. But one thing that is a little bit alarming is that as Joe Biden's campaign continues to uh, be on the decline, a lot of moderates are looking to him as basically the individual who can unite the moderate wing of the Democratic Party to ultimately take on Bernie Sanders. And, you know, there's some merit to that claim because Mike Bloomberg is an individual with a virtually unlimited amount of campaign funds. He has more than enough to make it to a general without raising a dollar from anyone in America. And on top of that, if it really seems like Bernie Sanders is going to run away with it, then, you know, I'm assuming a lot of moderates will try to unite around one candidate in order to consolidate the vote. And that person who's going to stick around who might be able to do that is Mike Bloomberg. So Mike Bloomberg is a threat. We don't want to underestimate him. However, with that being said, Mike Bloomberg has not been thoroughly vetted by leftists online yet. And um, the reason why I am feeling confident about our chances against Bloomberg is, first of all, Bernie is going to just annihilate him Running against a billionaire is perfect for Bernie Sanders' narrative. I saw someone explain this online, and I wish I could credit them, but they basically said, like, Mike Bloomberg is proving in real time why Bernie Sanders' theory of how broken American politics is, um, is. <laughs> like, <laughs> Americans get to see it. Like, Bernie will be proven in real time with Mike Bloomberg's rise. So, like, do you understand? We're gonna annihilate him. And here's the thing about Mike Bloomberg's record. It's abysmal, and as horrible as Joe Biden's record is, Joe Biden looks like an angel in comparison with Mike Bloomberg. Because if you'll recall, Mike Bloomberg is the former mayor of New York City who implemented the notoriously racist stop and frisk policy. And any policy analyst, even if you're not necessarily, you know, an expert in public policy, you could have predicted that this would end up leading to racial profiling. And that is exactly what happened. Now, Mike Bloomberg has a lot of skeletons in his closet, and those skeletons are coming out more and more as his numbers rise in the polls. So last week, we learned that he made just brazenly transphobic remarks, and you know, you'd think that after Bernie Sanders' Joe Rogan controversy that they'd be condemning this universally, but they're not. Instead, they're trying to help Mike Bloomberg, the DNC, changed their rules to allow him to participate in debates. And on top of that, he has surrogates from his campaign sitting on the DNC Rules Committee for the National Convention. So they love Mike Bloomberg. But it's going to be more and more difficult for them to not denounce him. Not just not support him, but denounce him. Because this is going to be something that could destroy the party if they fully embrace him like they t seem to be doing now. Um, so Benjamin Dixon, friend of the show, he also has a podcast that you should absolutely subscribe to. It's on Spreaker. He talks about how Mike Bloomberg spoke at the Aspen Institute in 2015 and he blocked the footage of that for whatever reason. He didn't want us to see what he said. Except Benjamin Dixon has that footage, he released it, and it's incredibly apparent why Mike Bloomberg didn't want that footage to get out. It's because it reveals that he is overtly racist. Take a look. 95% of your murders and murderers and murder victims fit one MO. You can just take the description, Xerox it, and pass it out to all the cops. They are male minorities, 15 to 25. That's true in New York, it's true in virtually every city. And that's where the real crime is. You've got to get the guns out of the hands of the people that get killed. So you've got to, if you want to spend the money for a lot of cops in the street, put those cops where the crime is, which means in minority neighborhoods. So it's one of the unintended consequences is people say, oh my God, you are arresting kids for marijuana that are all minorities. Yes. That's true. Why? Because we put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the, the way you get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall and, and frisk them. Because, and then they start, they say, oh, I don't want that. I don't want I don't even need to comment. 
that audio clip speaks for itself. And once again, kudos to Ben Dixon for sharing this. Um, I'm going to link you in the description box to the full audio podcast that Ben recorded. I would highly encourage you to listen to that. But I'll also put a link in the description box to a thread where uh, Ben Dixon actually talks about Mike Bloomberg's record at length. And on top of that, there are stories from 2016 where New York Daily News reports that an NYPD officer was punished for not stopping enough Hispanic teens in subways. So Mike Bloomberg can't feign ignorance here. He can't say, well, look, I wasn't aware that stop and frisk would lead to, you know, increased racial profiling. He knew that that was what would happen. And that was the goal. That was the point. Listen to what he said here. We over-police black communities because that's where all the crime is, according to him. And his Republicanism is showing. Like, if you didn't know, Mike Bloomberg is a former Republican, then an Independent, and now he is a Democrat. He literally spoke at the 2004 Republican National Convention. He endorsed George W. Bush after he invaded Iraq. Yeah. So his record is not good, to say the least. And his approach to crime is very Republican-y, if we want to be charitable. So rather than looking at socioeconomic factors, rather than looking at poverty, he just says, look, we have to over-police black communities because they commit the most crime. Like, to say that this is racist would be a gross oversimplification. This is the type of thing that helps perpetuate racism, right? This is why, like, this kind of thinking is why institutions in the United States have racism just ingrained so deeply it's because of shit like this this type of fucking antiquated ignorant thinking and this guy wants to be the president he wants to be president after he said this no because look let's let's say hypothetically speaking indulge me for a moment he were able to buy the nomination do you honestly believe you are going to be able to beat donald trump I know that moderates and, you know, the talking heads on MSNBC and CNN think that the he will be able to beat Donald Trump because, you know, if you run a moderate, then conventional wisdom tells you that you can win over those purple states. No. Every single election is about turnout. And if you are running someone who's functionally a Republican, who's most left, if you want to even call it that, I'd say most liberal policy was to ban big gulps. If you honestly think that that's going to be conducive to a victory for Democrats, you are horribly mistaken because Democrats lose when turnout is low. Ask yourself this, who's turning out for Mike Bloomberg? Who's turning out for a billionaire who is literally trying to buy his way into the White House? At this point, like if we see a billionaire versus a billionaire both buy their way to their respective party's nomination, like this is going to sh destroy people's trust. In American democracy. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. If Democrats run Bloomberg, they deserve to lose. They deserve to lose. Because you can't be that fucking dumb. Moderates can't be that thirsty to defeat Bernie Sanders that they're willing to nominate a racist and a transphobe after scolding everyone on the left for supposedly not being woke enough. After scolding Bernie Sanders for daring to speak to Joe Rogan. You're going to nominate this guy? No, no, not at all. Because there has to be at least a modicum of that facade left, like that facade that moderates care about, you know, uh, social issues. And if they end up going with someone like Mike Bloomberg, then that entire veneer is destroyed. They're revealing that they don't give a shit about social issues and racism and trans rights. They just care about beating Bernie Sanders, protecting, you know, their own wealth, making sure that, you know, Bernie can't raise their taxes is what they care about. So... They can't be stupid enough to show their cards like that, right? Probably not, but <laughs> it's entirely possible. I mean, the Democratic Party is so painfully stupid and out of touch that I wouldn't be surprised to see individuals, you know, within the Democratic Party establishment, sitting senators, just like openly endorse Mike Bloomberg if they think that's going to stop Bernie Sanders' momentum. But look, if you guys want a show, if you want to see like Bloomberg versus Bernie Sanders, bring it the fuck on. Because guess what? 
we are going to absolutely pummel him for his horrific record. And then Bernie's going to be the nominee, and we're going to crush Trump. So um, we have a reason to be confident here. It's because his record is so poor that if he goes on to win the Democratic Party as an institution, I mean, I don't know how it can survive past that. It's an embarrassment. It's a national embarrassment. But, um, you know, we'll see. But Mike Bloomberg, not somebody you should be throwing your weight behind if you truly care about social issues and you are committed to ending institutional racism and ending transphobia. Not someone to support. If you're serious, you support someone with a lifetime of advocacy for social justice. But not just social justice, economic justice, criminal justice, equality for all. So if you truly want us to believe that you're not just full-blown Republicans at this point, prove it. Support Bernie Sanders.